Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Liverpool gather their first trophy of Jurgen Klopp's farewell tour after Virgil van Dijk delivers a superheader in extra time to waste Chelsea 1-0 in the Carabao Cup final. Arsenal pick up right where they left off in the Premier League and breeze past Newcastle in a convincing 4-1 win. Manchester City need just the one Phil Foden goal to keep Bournemouth at arm's length and stay in touch of the league leaders. And Manchester United look lost without Rasmus Hoyland in attack and give up a late winner in injury time to Fulham. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. OK, my friend, we'll, we'll go to Wembley. We've just uh, seen the conclusion of, of Liverpool taking on Chelsea, uh, a game that had lots of talking points, lots of uh, things <laughs> to, to, to hit on. Um, mm. But it is Liverpool who win. It's another piece of silverware for Jurgen Klopp, the first <coughs> of four that they're chasing, so one in the bag, three to go. Um, Give me, give me, give me some of your, your takeaways, Rob. Some big picture before we go into <laughs> detail. Lot. <laughs> There's a lot, Rob, isn't there? There's a lot. I just felt like I've just watched three games in one. I mean, it seemed like the longest, you know, game forever. So many incidents, so many chances, so many. Well, it's disallowed goals. We had yeah. both teams hit the post. Mm-hmm. Both goalkeepers were outstanding, by the way. Um, yeah. And it was an amazing game. And you know, it, it, we just finished watching it, and, and it's kind of it's very easy, Rob, to cut to extra time, right? And we'll yeah. get to some yeah. of the details and stuff. But mm. the difference here, the difference here, and by the way, my overriding thought of this game, if I could, if I had a day to step out and and take a breath on mm-hmm. it, it was. There was nothing in this game. There was nothing in the game. Both teams had brilliant chances to score goals. They yeah. should have scored goals, um, both sides. Both goalkeepers made incredible saves, but still, particularly Chelsea with an early one with yeah. um, with Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer the, yeah, the Kelleher makes an incredible save. save. So it, it, it was a tight, tight game. We all know that Liverpool had a ton of injuries, young players in the starting lineup. But it, it, towards the end of the of the ninety minutes, Rob, it looked like Ch- uh, Liverpool were wilting. Chelsea came strong again when they, you know, they, they looked like they were going to be the team to go on. And something happened. Those subs that came on for Liverpool, Rob, those young players that we'll mention a little later yeah. uh, in, in this this kind of this chat, really. And what the manager must have said at the end of ninety minutes, going yeah. into extra time, that took this football club. To the top of them steps, picking up the trophy, and the team that didn't, and and there's a lot of little nuanced differences there. Yeah. But a sign of a manager that's 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 just got that magic, whatever it is, sparkle, dust, whatever he says to those players, whether they're experienced players or whether they're young players, he somehow found a way for that club to go again, Rob, and that team to go again in extra time and force that uh, goal with Virgil van Dijk. I mean, it, also van Dijk's kind of game as well was pretty spectacular. And uh, and for him to score the winning goal, you can see what it meant to him and the, uh, the players and the fans. And, and, you know, you see the scenes at the end there, Rob, which is... You know, probably the the image that we've just switched off our TVs yeah, and come yeah. away with is the is you'll never walk alone with the whole club, with Jurgen Klopp in the middle there in front of the fans singing that for them. Uh, it, 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 it's, it is a special club. Mm. It's been a special experience under Jurgen Klopp and, and he's the first part of the four. He's in these four tournaments. They've won the League Cup, Robin, and, and there was something special at the end there, an extra time that Liverpool could draw on that Chelsea couldn't. I think you make some great points, um, and you're right. And I think drawing on on, on what you say was the difference, and and, and it, some of its footballing, some of its mindset, some of its mm. belief and drive, and all those things. I think it's something that Liverpool can draw on now and can help them rob through now to the end of the season. This, this this trophy had more importance to both of these clubs than probably normal circumstances. For Chelsea to have won Pochettino, mm. his first trophy mm. since the Abramovich era, the Todd Bowley era, would have been a starting point to, to grow the football club. We'll, we'll get to Chelsea in a minute. For Liverpool, Rob, and I go back to, I think it's 2016 I go back to, he lost a League Cup final, Jurgen Klopp, and there was talk about, mm, you know, he, he, is he the guy who can't get them quite over the line? Mm. Eight years yeah. on, Rob, I mm. thought today stood for all the things that Jurgen Klopp has brought to this football club. Despite, the, despite who's playing, despite who's missing, despite who's, what the score is, despite whether we, we're on top of the game or not, we have a will, we have a culture, we have a never-say-die attitude that's going to get us over the line, mate. And I thought it showed through the club 
today. It was a victory mm. for everybody who's associated to Liverpool, whether you're an academy director who's worked with mm. one of those kids, whether you're a scout who's bought in the Virgil van Dijk's of the world, the top end, or, or the local lads who've, who've come in. I just thought it was a club victory today for Liverpool and, and a massive statement to what Jurgen Klopp has, has done and bought to the club and actually, Rob, what they miss when, he, when he's going to leave. Let's just stick with Liverpool, Rob, and, and sort of kind of, you know, talk about a few standouts for them uh, as we kind of dissect this final a little bit. And, um, you know, I think players that, n- that deserve a mention, I think, you know, Endo is, is uh, I thought he had a sound game in midfield, a player that started a little bit shaky at Liverpool, but it's become a more important part of it. I think he, out of the midfield players, Liverpool was probably the pick. Um, you know, when you when you look at the front line, so different to what you might expect to, to see from Liverpool in terms of their best players. Um Andy Robertson looking like he's back at his normal half at left back. I mean, Connor Bradley, the right fullback, Rob, that ended up playing higher yeah, up, didn't right, he, in the yeah. in the game uh, when Joe Mes Gomez came in to to right side. Um, and it, I'll go I'll go straight to my under under appreciated performer, Rob, because it does come in this game. And you know, I know there's there's Premier League games we'll get to as well, and there's yeah. some other incidents, but <clears throat> and maybe he is appreciated more than maybe what I think. But Quivine Kelleher. The second choice Liverpool goalkeeper yeah. um, that's played maybe five Premier League games last year, maybe a similar amount last year. He, he hasn't played a lot of big first team games. He's been in the Cup. I think he's played like five in the Europa, five in the League Cup or whatever. So he's kind of, he's the second choice guy. Yeah. And I just want to say that he looks like a, a very, very high level goalkeeper. Forget about who he's behind. He's, 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 of course, he's, he's behind one of the best in the world in Allison. But they have got another tremendous goalkeeper, Rob in all aspects we've mentioned him I think in the past and other games where he stepped in and did a great job the save to 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 Cole Palmer where he's instinctively guessed really by he's at to throw his arm in the position he's so close to 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 Palmer he's actually guessed where to throw his arm makes a brilliant save and other saves later in the game to Conor Gallagher I think late in the game I remember as well this kid is is amazing I think he's mid-20s he's got a huge career ahead of him yeah, so you you got other clubs that, you know, those that might need a goalkeeper. Um, that experience for him today, I'm so pleased for him because it's not easy to be, even though he's fairly young as a goalkeeper at 25, to keep sitting on the bench behind, a, you know, an outstanding goalkeeper at Liverpool. I think he is miles better than what you might expect for a second-choice goalie. And Kelleher today showed that everybody is, between his mentality demeanour, confidence, his, his mental state, Rob. He's never, he ain't jumping around. He's not one of them. He's pretty cold, uh, pretty calm goalkeeper, but capable of making good saves. Had tons to do with his feet as well. Never made any mistakes. I think he's, um, I think he's an, a, a really top-class goalkeeper already. It's a brilliant shout, mate. Absolutely brilliant shout because, um, again, just before uh, midweek, I was doing the, um, the Luton game, the Liverpool-Luton game, and, you know, you do your, your little notes and that. And I, and, I, and I wrote with Keller, who's in, obviously, because Alisson's picked up some muscle injuries, which is a little bit frustrating, I'm sure, for you, mm. Klopp, is I, I wrote down, Rob, worry-free number two. Like, yeah. play him, and, and they're in the worry. You know, some some number twos come in and you think, oh, gosh, you know, can't wait to get the, the, main, the, the number one goalkeeper back in, in the sticks because it all doesn't look quite the same. He looks confident, Rob. He's, he's not dramatic. He's got a nice cool poise and presence about him. He's got the confidence of his teammates. They play back to him, Rob. They, when his shots go in, they know mm. he'll hold on to him. I think, I think it's a brilliant shout. Um, I just let me, let me pose you a question then on, on, on Keller. Well, first of all, is there a worry that he might become a target for, for somebody who might want to put him as his number one and might at some point he want to do that? And the second sort of mm. qu- second part of the question, Rob, is... Doesn't this also lend again to the management of Klopp? Because even if Alisson was fit, wouldn't Kelleher have played? Hasn't he often played Kelleher in these kind of games to mm. make sure he's on top of games? And I think, Rob, not just to play, but to feel part of the group. Yeah, I think he would have played, Rob. I think he has played uh, many games. Mm, in the, played, in the, you yeah. know, I haven't got the data in front mm. of me right now. I think he's played quite a, quite a bit of it. Um, it makes sense, doesn't it, to play. If somebody as good as him, he needs to yeah. play games. Mm. Because the, the less games he plays, the more chance of him getting away. And it is a... It is a as a concern, Rob, isn't it? Because now after a game like you just put yourself in his shoes, right? His shoes. Now, I, I th- I'm not sure how long Alisson's going to be out, so this isn't going to be immediate. But can you yeah. imagine the next time a Kelleger jumps, jumps out the side? Alisson's back, he's fit, he's playing well. Kelleger, um, Kevin Kelleher's on the bench. 
And he, he remembers back to a day like today and, and what it means to be in the first team when you win games and you win trophies. And I don't know. I, 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 it's impossible for us to know how yeah. satisfied he is with the status quo about being number two goalkeeper. It's not as though Allison's like reaching the end of his career, Rob, is it? I mean, he's no, still got a long yeah. way to go. And I, so I, I don't, one of those, I just don't know how satisfied he's going to be. I mean, it is a special club and he's had plenty of minutes under Liverpool. But um, listen, that's something we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see. Um, I just want to give him a shout out today, Rob, for for somebody that that's, should be regarded as being one of the best in the Premier League, even though he's a number two. That's, that's all I wanted to say on that. Yeah, I, I, you're the, one other person that I want to mention, mate, and, and I think you, you mentioned him in, mm. in, in the top. I think the captain today deserves a, a, a mention, Virgil van Dijk, by the way. Yeah. He, yeah. he always scores that yeah. gets ruled out correctly, I have to say, for the VAR call. Great, great work by VAR. Yeah. We give it criticism, but he, he picked up on that. The header that he scores, I think the way he plays. Rob, you know, there's been some criticism after the injuries. He's the same player, you know. Is, is he still the be you know, best of, of class in, in there? I think his attitude, I think he started, Rob, he's played with Canate, he's played with Gomez, he's played with Matip, he's played with Kwanzaa. They all have fitted in mm. next to him. He looks like he's enjoying the responsibility now and has driven with Klopp and obviously got a great relationship with Jurgen Klopp. He's driven for these trophies to make sure his manager goes off in the right way. I thought he was he was outstanding today and, and not just mm. the player, because I think we all know he, he's, he's a bit of a Rolls Royce and he can do it. But I thought the personality and the, the character, and, and when I look at Chelsea, and we, we look at Chelsea, how they could do with a Virgil van Dijk in that group. How they could do mm. with somebody mm. of that mm. stature, Rob, who can, you know, when, when mm. they were on top and the game was theirs to be won, pushes them on and, goes, and mm. they go and win it. That's where what Chelsea miss, uh, were missing, I thought, today, and was, it, was part of the difference in the two teams. Just go back to the um, this is this old goal, Rob, because the amount of the amount of crazy feedback that I get on social media when I post saying that it was a you know a good call. I mean, I wish people would just check the FIFA laws. They're out there online. It's, you just tap in there. You Google FIFA laws of the game 23, 24, Get the current. Go down to rule. Uh, go down to law eleven offside, and it's in the text right there. You know, if you're in an offside position and there's no question, Endo is, is offside when the ball is played, so he's an offside position, mm -hmm. and then he inhibits a player or, or restricts a player um, to, that, that could have challenged for the ball. Yeah. Then he's interfering with play, yeah. <clears throat> and. No matter, no, in, in the past, you know, maybe these aren't picked up so much. Yeah, that's probably true in people's frustrations. But that, it, it, it kind of, you know, sometimes why VAR makes kind of quick. It was kind of right over to the side. It's a subjective one because, you know, there's a little bit of a... It wasn't a black and white, he's offside. Yeah. It was, was he interfering with play? Yeah. And that's when they go to the... Because they're called the subjective ones. So there's like sometimes a little bit of grey in that. You know, with an offside, is he interfering with play or not? That's when they go over. And he was pretty quick. Uh, and again, if you read down the text there... It, it kind of explains all that. So that was, um, <clears throat> but I mean, I mean, both teams hit the post. I mean, it was, it was, an, it was an amazing game of football, Rob. And it started off a bit shaky. I thought both teams looked nervous. I yeah. thought Chelsea looked particularly nervous, Rob. Um, if you want to jump onto them now yeah. with the way that they played out, I thought Levi Colwell looked, mm. looked really shaky. Over player that ball I, I'm a loving times, really as a centre back. Got he, yeah, his a passing bit, yeah. was off and they looked a little nervous. Mm. Um, but I mean, it could have gone their way. Yeah. It could have gone Chelsea's way, and and I, and I don't I don't think it's like I don't think this is a one way conversation, Rob. It shouldn't be for us to have a, you know how great Liverpool are and how no. crappy Chelsea are. They can't get over line and win. That's something of it. But this could have been very different. Mm. And yes, of course, I know you've got to take your chances. But in, in another day, you might expect mm. them to score at least one goal there. Yeah. You know, they got a little bit fraction offside with Sterling's uh, off goal that he scored that was just offside. It was a very tight game. Two teams. The, the strangely kind of little off colour but still created and almost scored yeah. a million I mean, so many goals in the game so um, it, it will be it'll be a blow and I think the headline probably will be Rob that, 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 that we went to at the start of this conversation that Klopp found a way yeah. and Poch didn't I yeah. mean that that's yeah, probably going to be the, be the, the headline here mate. but it was It'll a tight game be the yeah, yeah it was tight um, you know, Conor yeah. Gallagher alone could have had a, a hat trick today, Rob. Finishing was just off, didn't make some right decisions. They got in a good space. Yeah, hit the post. It's a post with a, with a nice yeah, the post. one that, you know, that beats Callagher and, and comes out. And, you know, it just didn't seem to be their day. But, you know, the, the headlines, the narratives, the criticism is going to come on the club. And Pochettino, Rob, you know, 
people are going to talk about hasn't won a trophy. People are going to talk about this Chelsea team bottling it. I think we're hearing and stuff like that that it, you know couldn't stand up to mm. to Liverpool's kids. Um, yeah. Is is. Is the next is the next step now important for, for Pochettino? And from now to the end of the season, feels like an important twelve or thirteen games, Rob. Yeah, they've they've improved, Rob, haven't they? Mm. They have improved, mm-hmm. and that's why before this game kicks off, just before I thought, you know what, I th- I, th- I fancy Chelsea to win this in a tight game. I yeah. just I think they've been better. I think they've understood about shape and being working harder for the team. I think they're all working a little harder now. I think the midfield kind of triangle, if you like, and, and Gallagher, Enzo, and, and Caicedo, it looks really, really strong. I really like Malo Gusto at right back, though I thought we had a shaky game yeah, today. Again, yeah, yeah. listen, we, I, I, I've been there in these in a final, and it's it's bloody nerve wracking. You know, all your family's there. It's a cup final. You want to don't want to make a mistake. It, and I just thought a couple of their players were a little off it. Um, so they're, they're, they're improving, Rob, and, and this, shouldn't, this shouldn't be too much of a blow for them. Of course, it's Pochettino's job to, to kind yeah. of lift their, lift their heads up and get cracking again. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's just the difference there. And those kids, we should mention them, Rob, Jaden yeah. Dance, Bobby Clark and James McConnell. McConnell Apart yeah. from, you know, the, the Connor Bradleys that, that, that were, was outstanding in the game yeah, well, and, and yeah. Kevin Kelleher that we talked about. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's well done for the Liverpool Academy to bring those young players in to be able to make an impact in a cup final. I mean, that, that will end up being a story in, in extra time while those kids came mm. on and were not phased. And compared to the Chelsea subs, you had uh, yeah. Mudrick come into the game, didn't yeah. You yeah, and uh, Madawake come in, Kung-Fu, had little f- yeah. and Cuckoo's wire and little flashes, and yet mm. they lost it. Chelsea lost somehow, they lost their way in an extra time. Uh, and Virgil van Dijk, I mean, he, he gave him a warning earlier with the goal yeah. that was um, that was offside with Endo. I mean, he is a powerhouse and a a, 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 prim- a Premier League and Liverpool legend, really, isn't he? Virgil van Dijk, Robbie's yeah, getting to the he, point where well, the yeah. way he carries himself, mm. he's, he's a proper, yeah, proper um, top player in this league. Just going back on the point, and I was just making uh, a point with, with these young players, Rob, and, and it's like, it's not just their ability. This, we've all grown up with talented players and, and, and seen players, but it's almost like the confidence that they play with, Rob. They're happy to accept the ball. They, they'll take it under pressure. They play out from the back. They don't just, you know, at times, I, I remember when I was a kid getting into the first team, the first thing I want to do is just pass the ball, keep it safe and, and, and move on. These, these kids, and, and, and mm. I'm not sure... That's, it's different, that, Robert, now. It is different, and like, the academies train them. And I'm just saying yeah, it's a credit to, a different way. to all the academies out there mm. and all the academy coaches who we don't know often, we don't see, they don't mm. often get a, a, a pat on the back. Mm. But what, what mm. how sort of fitting it must be for, for an academy coach who might not even mm. be at the game, but what some of these kids who they've had at U7, U8, U9s, and then we're seeing them in a, in a, in a first-team picture at whatever, 17, 18, 19 years of age, and com- be comfortable, Rob. It, 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 it yeah. does all go well for, for English football when, we sh- when you see these kids coming in and, and the kind of confidence with which they're playing. Yeah, it's well said. And I think you're seeing it from a lot of clubs in England now. I think our, our academy system now and the way that the, yeah. the Premier League teams have had the money to invest over the last decade are really starting to, mm-hmm. you know, I think we're seeing that in the national team with England, yeah. national team with the young players coming through and, and being really strong uh, for the most part, being developed at Premier League clubs. Um, and then when you look in the stands, Rob, when you see Mo Salah and, and Shobersly yeah. and, and Van... Um, Trent Alexander Arnold and everybody yeah, else that yeah. isn't fit. Yeah, they're, they're all there. I was like four or five of them in a line. It's like this club, it's, uh, it, it's in, it, again, it just goes back to Jurgen Klopp's kind of decision to move out mm, right it's now. It's a great and job for somebody, isn't now, it? Rob, he's, it's, he's, it's waiting for somebody, isn't it? It's a great job for somebody. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I mean, just finally on, on this, Rob, and, and Jurgen Klopp, that's the seventh trophy, I think, now with uh, Liverpool. Yeah. And you're, you're definitely seeing him more animated, sure. taking it in, yeah. enjoying yeah. it more, running to, to different sides of Anfield, running to the, you know, in, being right in the centre of the trophy yeah. there when, when they both lift it up together. So you're seeing the Klopp effect. I mean, we got we got, we got weeks yet, mate, and we, mm. we shouldn't get into this yet about Jurgen Klopp. No. But, I mean, I was thinking the other day, you know, Rob, if you had to... Mold right. If you had a flipping AI bloody robot for a Premier League manager, and 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 all the things that you might want from that person in terms of personality, strength, and tactical smarts, being understanding with players, arm around the shoulder, being confident in interviews. I mean, he is 
I guess maybe you wanted to be English. I, I, you, yeah. Maybe you, you're going to be wanting to come from your area of, mm. of England, I suppose. But other than that, he, he ticks... I mean, Pep's incredible, right? Yeah. But in different ways, Rob, Pep doesn't sort of tick every box at no. Klopp does. He's, Klopp he's ticks less war, every box, And, and he? this is not a criticism, but an observation. Pep's less warm than, than Klopp. Klopp's warmer, yeah. Rob. Less connecting with the fans. Yeah, more connected. Doesn't connect with yeah. the fans so much. Yeah. It's a good point, though, and I, yeah, I know exactly it, what you're saying. Yeah. There's a tick list of... of yeah. Listen, when Liverpool got him robbed from Dortmund, I don't think they quite understood mm. or realised just how big a personality and how good this mm, guy perfect. was. And he's yeah. shown over the eight years that he does tick a lot of the boxes yeah. and he's going to be big shoes to fill. Um, but, yeah, yeah. We, we've yeah. got an exciting last two, three months of the season. Um, I heard yeah. somebody talking about it this week, a, a journalist or something, and says and said, Jurgen Klopp understands about this next two or three months. And he's almost like, he's a bit of a showman. And I think he knows that the cameras are going to be on him and he's going to give us stuff. He's going, he's going to give us stuff. And he's emotional, Rob. He wears his heart on his sleeve. Another thing that I think we mm. like about mm. him, maybe that Pep doesn't do it in quite the same way. So, um, yeah, well, we, mm. we should savour it. We should remember him. We should celebrate him. Um, because he's going to be a miss w when he goes, but there's still plenty of football to go and three more trophies for Liverpool to go for. Hey, Rob, just just final point. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you think about it, right, it's, it's him, right? This is like he's playing He's playing the last 10 minutes of his, his football career. Yeah, yeah, he's going to give it game. everything. Yeah, he's absolutely yeah. going to be all the energy to put into these last two or three months to try and achieve things for this club as he walks away. But knowing he's going to walk away, yeah. he must be thinking, right, everything I'm going to give into this. You know, my family, I'm not going to see you much. I'm going to give everything, knowing that the break is coming. And I think that's going to help Liverpool. They're sat top of the league, top of the league table. They've just won the, the League Cup. They're in everything else. Um, um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a great. It end, end up being a good watch today, mate. Mm. I, you know, it was it was long. There was lots of things mm -hmm. going on. Not a ton of goals, obviously, but man, that that was that was some kind of yeah, sign of character yeah. at the end for them to yeah. come through and win. So well Absolutely. done, Liverpool, and, and, and commiserations, Chelsea. Not far Absolutely. away, but not quite good enough today. Let's move it to the Premier League, mate, because we got we've got a mm. race, my friend. We have a three horse race, no. uh, and I'm going to take you straight to the Emirates. To Arsenal, hosting Newcastle. Um, mm. Remember the reverse mm. fixture? Mm. The Anthony Gordon goal, yep. the possible red cards yep. for Havertz and Bruno Guimaraes, a bit of fallout on the touchline. Well, there was many who thought, interesting game for Arsenal. Could be a bit of banana skin, Newcastle coming back. He's at back in the team and a bit of bad blood between the two. Um, I'm afraid, mate, from, from Newcastle's point of view, nothing of the sort. Uh, it was a... 4-1 scoreline that I said on it, I thought flattered Newcastle. Arsenal mm. were outstanding mm. in the first 45 minutes. Newcastle didn't have mm. a shot. Mm. Not one shot in the first 45 minutes. Mm. Um, as good as I've seen Arsenal, Robin, they've been pretty good since the turn of the year. As mm. good as I'd seen mm. them in the first half. And they got the goal second half once the third goal went in. It was um, a bit of a clinic, to be honest, from Mikel Arteta's man. Mm. Uh, I just thought it was... I. I, I... I just, I thought that Arsenal were almost perfect. Mm. For, 30, for 45 minutes, that first half, that's about as complete a a performance as they, they could ever hope for. And, and what I would say as well, that that as well, I've made a note, Rob, of that like, that felt like the perfect modern, that's a modern Premier League first half in yeah. terms of what everybody's trying to do in the Premier League right now, in terms of the playing out, in terms of the crazy high press, yeah, yeah. the floating players, the interchanging, the everything that's trendy and cool nowadays, um, from false nines to, to half spaces to full press and all this stuff that we all talk about. I thought Arsenal did it perfectly. And I don't know what's happened, Rob, since the turn of the year to yeah, Arsenal, yeah. because this is different. And this, this is different in, in terms of like... I don't know they've grown somehow. This the, the, this kind of energy, and and maybe it's from maturing and experience yeah. and Declan Rice that mm. I, that drives the team. But there's something tougher, stronger, more aggressive in the team. The way that they play, and they've still got the football, and maybe the football at times this season, Rob hasn't been quite as really pretty as it yeah. was last yeah. year. But the prettiness has been replaced mm. by a, a steely, yeah. aggressive, physical nature that I haven't seen. And they were absolutely all over Newcastle, Rob. Newcastle couldn't put two passes together. Yeah. 
yeah. because of the energy and the pressing. Uh, I, I thought Phew, that's that's as impressive. And when you said there that we've got a race, we've got a race. It, mm. That mm. doesn't look like that's going anywhere for Arsenal. And yeah. we know we all, of course we know about last year and some key injuries. If the kind of the, the the spine of that team remains in place, then they look in good shape. And whilst I'm on a roll, Rob. I am going to go on to a guy that you mentioned me on the air and Kai Havertz. Yeah. Now, the, the, now, in terms of something's changed in this team, uh, uh, some has changed in Havertz. And I, in the last two or three uh, weeks, and I'll tell you what's changed, is that he now has become an, an aggressive, mm. physical, mm. hardworking number nine. Yeah. Now, that... that is if like you know he's probably, you know whether it's him or his manager, you know the the, the number eight or the the number ten, the fancy yeah, kind of footballer yeah. getting the box scoring goals hasn't quite worked, and it's not I, not as much as reinventing himself, but I think he's thought, hmm, how can I how can I really be effective and yeah, and he's gone with yeah. uh, he's gone with uh, with work and with with physicality and and closing. I mean, fans love that stuff. I mean, I, I made a career out of it, Rob. Yeah, I wasn't a technical yeah. player. I charged around, I tackled, I closed, and I worked my socks off to be favoured, to be useful for the team. Now, you know, he got his goal, and, and, and it's amazing how good things happen mm. when, when you have yeah. that mentality to run around, to, to close down. Now, you know, it, 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 um, is it just me? It, like, It's not just that Kai Havertz has come good. He's come good in an unexpected way yeah. of the way that he's been effective for the team. Mm. And long may that continue because that's useful for, yeah, for Arsenal Football yeah. Club more than the little in and out games guy in as a number eight or whatever that now seems to be fired up aggressive and scary I mean he's 6'4 and he is, yeah, he's a big guy yeah. and he's starting to use it and uh, love it yeah I love it I mean, it's a good point, and 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 we we did sort of have a little bit, bit of a joke saying, you know, uh, that you know you're in or you're out, and it must be for a long t- time was out, and, and it was just <laughs> a point we'll make. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting, and and you've given me an extra thought to what I was thinking. Maybe Rob, sometimes, and and I used to find I was an attacking midfield player, right, and sometimes. Now and then, depending on the game, the manager would say to me, like, you know, go and play yeah. right next to the centre forward. And sometimes I didn't really like mm. that because it didn't. I like my role clarified. I like to know, you yeah. know, the detail of what I got. Mm. I'm just wondering if, if you know, as an eight, and, and when I look at Odegaard, I don't think Mikel Arteta personally coaches Martin Odegaard to do some of the things he does. I think he get Odegaard gets him them spaces, and he naturally will play a certain way. Yeah. I just wonder yeah. if if, if, yeah. if I, Kai Havertz isn't that guy who gets in those spaces and naturally knows. But the clarification of his yeah. role as a false nine is a lot more determined. It's a lot more succinct. And, you, uh, and as you said, yeah. and, and I did a little piece on him at the weekend, I think he gives uh, Arsenal a different option. He's got size. He's got physicality. I think he's got a good football IQ where he knows it, where he can drift in, in into centre-backs and draw them out. Or he can play on the shoulder a little bit and, and pin people back. I just think that he kind of feels like he looks to me like he feels more comfortable in the new role and there's more clarity to this new role than maybe as an eight or a ten where he's a bit in between and I don't think it naturally fits his game. It looks like Robbie is if as if he said to himself, Right, I, I want to make myself a flipping permanent fixture. Yeah, you know, yeah. how am I gonna feed, play in this team? You know, yeah. I, 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 how, how am I gonna do it? Now all I would say is of course he got his goal, right? Mm. He got his goal in yeah. the first half and well done. He yeah. makes a run and it ends up beautiful yeah. ball back from Martinelli, mm. well done. I still I still gotta say that that physicality and aggression and work ethic on its own isn't gonna be enough. But the goals are starting to come, Rob. If yeah. he can add no no, he, he missed, might a, not he be missed guy an easy he missed an easy one. At 2 0, did. didn't he? Which he changes did. the game, which is part of the he reason he gets a bit, bit of criticism. Yeah. yeah, and you're right, but yeah, he's yeah. got to, he's got to produce. But he's got five goals now, hasn't he? Is that five goals for the season, I think. Yeah. I, I, I think he has. Yeah, yeah five and, or six um, goals now. Yeah. Listen, it, 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 yeah. He's not, you know, it's not all finished and done and done. Six, he's, he's a great signing for them, goals, yeah. sorry, mate, just to, to be sure. Six yeah, Premier League goals. goals, yeah. yeah. So he, and he spent them. a lot, and he wasted. I mean, mm. that's a long time in the first half of the season. We didn't get, he got very yeah. few. And then they yeah, gave him yeah. the penalty, didn't they, to get his first Premier League yeah, goal? They gave him the so penalty, it's yeah. just, listen, mm. I, 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 I'll always give credit where credit's yeah. due. And if it means it goes, it, it goes against what I believe mm. from earlier on, absolutely no problem with that. And, and I wanted to give him credit, yeah. given how he's, not just this game, by the way, the last two or three games, he's been like a bit of a man possessed. And it's like, 
I don't mind that. Like that that's affecting the game. What you yeah. don't want is a player that's in and out and the game's passing you by, which we all mm. we all got to us yeah. when we were playing yeah. Robin and, yeah. and coaches said, Don't let the game pass you by somehow. And he's and, he, and he's just doing it. Like, listen, that's goals. That's that's tons of goals from Arsenal as well, from different parts of the set team. Pieces from again, mate, as well. Another two goals mention them again. Set I pieces. I know. Yeah, no, absolutely right, Robert. And uh Wow, it's uh, it's exciting for Arsenal fans because, like, I think it was like December, Rob, wasn't it? They went flat a little yeah, bit, and it's yeah, like ah, yeah. they've they've gone off a little bit. But the, but since January, I think it was. I kind of look back at the results since January the turn yeah, of the year. The Liverpool they game, they have got some lost to Liverpool, and then they yeah, they, 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 they've flown. That's it, and the cup, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. Yeah. Wow, I enjoyed the game. Newcastle had no answers for yeah. it. You know, um, I'm pleased for Joe Willick to come back and get a goal. Yeah. He's been injured forever, nice it seems it, yeah. like. And they're getting some players back. Harvey Barnes is back. But this wasn't about Newcastle, yeah. I'm afraid. And maybe yeah. other days will be, and other podcasts will be. This was about a performance. And this isn't against a, you know, a Burnley. This is against Newcastle United yeah. that, yeah. that can, can dig a little bit and have got strong defenders. Um, so if Arsenal, and, and I and I hope that, that, and they've done it in different ways. Yeah, yeah. The, the Liverpool game was the, I can't remember the specifics now. Was was a was a heavy metal? Then they had a, yeah, a yeah, intricate, a thoughtful spell, yeah. win. This one's a little bit in between. The manager is getting, yeah. he's getting the credit he's to him. He the does, right he notes some credit matches. right now, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, listen, we, we've got twelve games to go, and we might get to the end of March and April, and things don't look as good. But I, I saw a, a, an interesting article yesterday. Robert said like the Arteta from that day in Newcastle when. I thought it was a mm. foul and the goal wasn't given, but the, you know the disgrace, yeah. the letting himself. Yeah. There's a there's a bit yeah. of change. There's a maturity in him and, and his team where it you know he he's probably learned and, and over this over the course of things he's probably learned from last season and right now he's got his mm. team right in the groove and and if they can keep it there, Rob, if they can keep it anywhere near there, they've got to have a chance. Yeah, and just another a little side note for people to to watch out for, and, and of course, Jorginho is back mm, in the side, and yeah. it allowed Rice to play yeah. forward in, the, in an eight, which I think the manager uh, Ateta really likes that. Yeah. Um, just um, Martinelli's position, Rob. It's just something for people out there to because because it always used to be, and and I've, they're, they're they're kind of learning different tactical kind of themes all the time. But yours with Martinelli wide 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 yeah. left, Saka wide wide mm. right. Martinelli came in a lot more in this game and that's where the Havertz goal came from he, yeah. he played a lot more inside um, it's just something to watch I mean I haven't seen too much of that before it may be that, that sometimes uh, Martinelli can be a little quiet he's out there he gets a ball he's up against a good defender for example and he plays backwards and it's a little bit he gets a little bit nullified in some games yeah. it's almost like the manager said to him you know what if you feel like you want to roll inside into these little spaces and stuff I thought he did that well I yeah. thought he did that well and that's mm -hmm. different and my mom, I, you were always looking for things that's different in yeah. what they do and um, we've seen that in the last four, three or four or five games mm -hmm. but Martinelli's kind of wandering from the left is interesting because that is different yeah. and that run across and pull back for Havertz's goal was a, was a sign of that so um, evolving changing keeping it interesting for the players making it difficult for opponents to read what yeah. he's going to play um, and just final thought Rob on him really for Arsenal is that and I'm always a big believer in this when things are going really really well I hope that the manager and particularly the players just understand what it is understand what it's been this last yeah. six weeks or yeah, so yeah. that's that's made them crush teams mm. crush teams with pressure with aggression with um yeah, you know, some of their football and, and and when it if it goes off if it threatens to go off the rails just hang on let's remember back to what what it was that got us to this point of course yeah. you can't help if injuries affect teams performance but i'm sure they'll be learning and understanding rob what can win games mm. well and my final point is i've always said particularly last year arsenal won a lot of games in a tight dramatic manner they're winning games easily, yeah. which is Controlling the sign. Controlling the opposition, yeah. There so I the XG say, against, of, of, Rob, of is champions. incredible, by the way. The XG against, you know, yeah. shots conceded is incredible in terms yeah. of, of working yeah. with the opposite. So, yeah, good point uh, for yeah. to make mm. uh, as Arsenal put another four goals. Mm. It, was it 25 goals now in, in six games since the turn of the year? I mean, yeah. incredible return uh, for yeah. an Arsenal team well that is in pretty good form. Let's move it to... Mm. Um, Mm. Vitality Stadium, uh, Bournemouth hosting Manchester City, Areola's Bournemouth against Pep's uh, City, two Spanish coaches, two tacticians, two ways uh, of playing. It wasn't vintage City, but it was important City. Phil Foden with another important goal from midfield mm. and a three points mm. that closes the gap at the top of the table. Um, 
Is there any concern that City, the football isn't quite as good, Rob? Is it more about that this is a team mm. that they get the job done and, and OK, it was a 1-0 win against Brentford, it's a 1-0 win against Bournemouth, it's six points and that's the most important thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, Rob. I mean, I think because, you know, for, for, for another team, it might be, but because we've got so much preliminary evidence to go yeah, back on yeah. and what they've done before is mm. that the, the main thing for them is that they, when they don't play well, they still win. Yeah. And you still got Erlen Haaland going through a few mm. times and it's his shot that led to the goal for Phil Foden. Again, Phil Foden's, you know, always somebody always seems to step up. And we've seen yeah. it before from De Bruyne or it might be Bernardo Silva. It might be a Julian Alvarez game, you know, and, and Phil Foden has, has stepped up his game this year to be an important not only a, pl a footballer and playmaker but a goal scorer I've always said yeah. that about him that he's got a natural eye for goal um, which always seems to, to to gravitate him towards the penalty box and he looks to get off and he, and he gets a, a tapping goal pretty much so yeah I think there's been a few of those where they haven't been great mm. but but you know that they've got the potential to be great again yeah. and they probably will be great again so yeah. I think you know like, like your first words Rob about this and you look at the league table and it's like tight it's two points it's yeah. Arsenal 58 Liv uh, City 59 and Liverpool 60 I can't I can't be any more excited about what we're seeing we can eulogise about Arsenal what we just have or Liverpool from winning the cup final of, and of playing great and Man City not maybe at their best but they're mm. still right there it is going to be fascinating I hope it doesn't come down to Blimmin' injuries, Rob, you know, and, yeah. and key players being out and we don't get the, 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 the final race that we want from these three great teams at the moment. I just hope that. And Liverpool, of course, is the biggest concern, I guess, with the amount of injuries they've got, though I think a few of them are pretty close. Um, but Man City, Rob and Man City, and as long as they don't lose their key players, and I know the De Bruyne thing is still a bit of a concern yeah, that he's, he's feeling yeah. it a little bit, which is, yeah, which is a which is a worry and they're being very careful with him. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, they're finding ways to do it. And their mentality, their experience tells us that they're going to be there. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well done, City. Again, and, and, I, and, I, and I like Bournemouth. I like what they try and do yeah, with the manager. Yeah, yeah. I thought they had um, a real good go second half, didn't they? Yeah. A little bit better in the Yeah, they're, they're, they've, got, they've got some good players. Mm. And uh, I like the way they I mean, it just shows you that you can be more expansive. Yeah. And, and we'll get to some of the other games, you know, with Palace's victory or whatever. But yeah. you, you can, with really smart coaching nowadays, you can you can be more expansive and do OK in this league over the course of 38 games, of course. But um, yeah, just they fell a little bit short, but still pretty blooming good when, when City, mm. you know, it, um, it takes a while for them to, to, to find a way to beat you. I just think with City as well, Rob, you know, often we talk, I, I said on air, I think it was, it was Ahmed asked me about, you know, the 1-0 win. And I said, in a strange way, they beat um, Bournemouth 6-1 in the reverse fixture on a great football day when, you know, City do what they do. But sometimes those 1-0 mm. wins are just as important. And, and one of the things I, I, I admire mm. about City is their ability to, at times, roll the sleeves up. They, they were up against it a little bit for 15, 20 minutes, where Bournemouth had to go and make, put a few subs mm. on. Semedo was going yeah. down one side, and Unai had her header down, down the other. Um, and they scrap almost like they're in a relegation fight. They, they, they don't mind doing that mm. as well, Rob. And that's why I think is a the difference. There's some teams who don't, who don't want to go there. This, this City team will do what it takes, and, and I think they deserve a little bit extra credit for that because we always talk about their football and how it nullifies the opposition and, you know, they pin you back and put you in the bars. But days when the football isn't good, they don't all say, OK, it isn't one of those days. Let's roll the sleeves up and, and let's do what's required. No, I think that's a, that's we talked about that, Robert. In you know, they they've made some signings in terms of defenders with Akanji, with Ruben Diaz. They've got Kyle Walker. They've got Nathan Ake. They've got they've got plenty of physical physicality back there. Plus the incredible protection of Rodri. So I think when that needs to be done, Rob, they've now got players, and it ain't always perfect. They've mm. conceded they've conceded plenty of yeah, goals over the last goals, yeah. few matches, and for them, which is which isn't normal, but which is I all you always get surprised, Rob. I do anyway, because like. God, you, you know, you've got so many good defenders back there, but they're so expansive and they throw so many people forward that they are going to get caught and they have been caught. But um, no, it's important, Rob, that they that they have that physicality and another sign of it uh, in this game against Bournemouth. So that, that's what they can do. That's why they've won a zillion competitions and, yeah. the, and the treble last year. And they're going to be right up for it again. It's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun race to watch. OK, let's go to Old Trafford, the theatre of dreams, my friend. Jim Ratcliffe's coming out this week in the media and said, mm. you know, he's looking to take Manchester City and Liverpool off the perch in, in the Sir Alex Ferguson sort of quote from back in the day. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, Manchester United's new stadium, the, the Wembley, the North. There's a lot of talk, you know, 
about uh, bringing in executives. You've got Omar Barada in. They're looking at uh, Dan Ash- Ashworth mm. from um, uh, Newcastle. So lots of positive off-field talks and, and moves behind the scenes, Rob. But on the on the pitch, four straight wins. Um, you know, we, we're starting to think, is, is this the consistent run that Manchester United needed? And then we get a performance and a result like we got yesterday. Uh, Manchester United won, Fulham two. Mm. No, I looked at this game, Rob. I know it was in that window, if, and you had yeah. a different on, on our on our air was a different yeah. game. Mm. Um, but I wanted to watch this. And, and first off, the, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, this interview, which I, I watched, um, I watched the whole thing. Yeah, really good, mm. like really good, like saying the right things, not not looking backwards, looking forwards, yeah. smart approach, getting best in class. Um, he did say that Champions League football is incredibly important to them, mm. um, which. This is going to be a blow, mate. If if they can't if they can't find a way to get into the Champions League, and again, it, we, there might be an extra spot in, yeah, in the Premier League. Fine, we don't yeah. know yet until this season's European competition has kind of come to an end. I think I don't know the exact details, but it could be five. So there is maybe another spot there, maybe. Um, but playing like this, they got no chance. I mean, it it was a it was back to awful. Back to awful, and I know that there's injuries, and Rasmus Hoyland's uh, you know, the timing of Hoyland's injury, Luke Shaw going out the side. Rob, we know that Lisandro yeah. Martinez was back, and then he was out again. The timing of that was not bad; it was is awful. You know, it throws Rashford up front again, where he looked he looked lethargic, didn't have much of an impact. Amari Forson as a young kid that got started. You know, Anthony was fit and available. I think he came mm, in in the last minute time, of the game, yeah. but is absolutely out out of favour right now. And young Forson started. Now it's not. Forson's fault. He had very little impact. You know, you start to get to a point, Rob, where there's so many young players out there playing in a situation where the club, the fans, it's not great. It's not yeah. easy to play in that. There's a lot of, you know, Mainu was 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 okay, but he looked a little tired. I thought. I thought Fulham found found ways to play through the Manchester United midfield. Yeah. All the way through, yeah. that was really really easy. You got Garnacho that was in and out the game a little bit. I, I just think. There's so much. I mean, when, when they go behind, Rob, the the, the, the end, or there's one nil down, you know, then then there was a moment in the second half for us like gung-ho. Here we go. And, and I'm like, here we go. Man United, this is this is yeah. what they prefer. Like, we're losing. Let's throw everything at them. Let's throw Maguire up front. Let's really, nothing to lose. Let's go yeah. for it. And they look better. They get to 1-1 and you think, mm. you know, th- this is the, they're probably going to win the game. But that gung-ho nature catches them out. A Wobi goes up the other end and they score and they lose yeah. the game. It, it, it's been... You know, two steps forward, one back again in this game. And I just, you know, the the, the biggest question is going to be how the, the new ownership Locate, feel yeah. about the manager. Mm. And that was an awful exhibit, example of where they're at. You know, the, and I know there's injuries, but every club's got injuries. Yeah, yeah, but to yeah. lose and to get outplayed large periods mm. by Fulham, Rob, yeah. was a terrible look. It was a terrible look. Casemiro in midfield, mm. and there's no more respect for what he's done and the medal he's got than me, is is just kind of jogs around. He had a few nice little first-time spinners in behind, the first time for, for forwards, but gets caught out. He doesn't really run back. He, he, he hasn't got the energy in there. McTominay came in, uh, I, I don't know when, at some point in midfield. Yeah, because Casemiro came off in a, the, the challenge, didn't he, with Reed? Uh, remember they had a head challenge uh, and he had to come the, off and yeah. McTominay came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it was, a, it, was a, it was a shocker. It was a shocker. And... Uh, you know, Eric Ten Hag has said, I think he said after the game, I made a note of it, the team, this is based on them coming back from 1-0 yeah, down yeah. at home against Fulham. He said the team showed big personality and character. Eric yeah, Ten Hag and they're like the, the future, some about the future um, looking bright or something, was it? The bigger picture, yeah, so the bigger I, picture I'm, looking I, bright. Mm. I mean, what, yeah. what we know, it's Robbie, not, with this Jim Ratcliffe and this Ineos group is, you, you said it at the top of the thing, they're talking about excellent, best in class. They're, they're thorough. Yeah. Correct. They're experts. They'll yeah. look at data. From what yeah. you're saying, and, and again, I didn't see all the games, so I saw a highlight package. I, yeah. I, I picked up on a couple of uh, yeah. reports after. There was an interesting stat that came out, Rob, that said in the last, I think it's five Manchester United games, they've conceded 100 shots at their goal. 17 mm. shots yesterday, Fulham have. Now, that can't be controlling yeah. a football match if, if Fulham can come away at your ground and have 17 shots. Newcastle didn't have one shot in the first half against Arsenal. Mm. And Newcastle are uh, a lot more dangerous uh. team. So, 
Hey, 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 you know, for a, t well. for a group like Ineos who will be looking at data and looking at all those things, I'm surely they're looking at this and thinking, hmm, you know. And, and, and I'm now in the position, Rob, where I've got to, I think Ten Hag is a good, honest football man who's doing his best in the circumstances, but I just don't think he's of the ilk that we're talking about Jurgen Klopp mm. and Pep. And maybe De Zerbi mm. and, 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 and Arteta. I just don't think he's of that level. Mm. And, and so I don't want to keep criticising him because I think he's a good, honest football guy. Yeah. But I just don't think, Rob, he's in that, that echelon of, of quality. Well, and, and I, I totally agree, Rob. I totally agree. And given what they've done in going for, for really good people from the CEO from Man City, who was almost yeah. the head man there. They got him the head man. Dan Ashworth is going to go from Newcastle. Really, really highly respected as a technical director, director of football. I, I think it makes absolute sense for at the end of the season to thank Eric Ten Hag. Um, you know, did he best that he could, yeah. but try and get somebody that is close, close to that that sort of respect of being a really top, top manager. And, and again, it's not easy and I can't throw yeah. a name at you right now. Yeah, I'm just yeah. thinking that, it, yeah. you know, but um, I agree. And I, I'd be really surprised if Eric Ten Hag stays on, give them what they want. They want a clean slate, a, a fresh sheet of paper. Okay. What do we want here? The, the, the director is going to be in place. The, everything's kind of going to be in place for them to make and find the right guy. They've got time now between now and the end of the season to put their feelers out, to, to really, kind of and, and, and in, a, a really interesting thing that Sir Jim Ratcliffe said in the interview Rob is that they'll always walk to the right decision and not run to the wrong one yeah, and, and, it, and it's yeah, like really nice this kind of smart like to yeah. take the time to get yeah. the right person and not rush to get somebody who's not yeah. quite right so now they've got time to walk to the end of the season to find the right person with the director with the CEO to totally change this thing and I think you know again it, it, this isn't reacting off of the one game that was a that no, was a bad no, game but no. it, it's it's yeah. you know we've all it's seen the pattern, club and this, yeah. this manager work now for a long period of time and there's been some good work and mm. stuff and some good performances where I'm saying like that's better that's that's Man United and that's what we want to see and don't change this this and that and, and they've had to do that through injury but still it should have been better than that and to, to get really kind of played through many many times by Fulham is an awful look and um, one that I don't think we're going to see next year. And before we move on, mate, I want to go to my underappreciated oh. form of the week. And it's a club, it's to a club at Fulham that at times I, I take the criticism. We don't give enough love to, we don't give enough air time to, mm. obviously the, it's not yeah, that often the middle, that they're yeah. the main game. So we don't always yeah. get a chance to see them, but I'm going to, I want to point to their manager, mate, Marco Silva. You talk about managers and, I remember sitting mm. down, we sat down with him in the summer series uh, before a ball was kicked and, and was, Mitrovic was going, the Saudi thing was on, he didn't know what was happening, he didn't have money mm. to spend, mm. he, was talk, he was talking himself about whether he was going to leave to go to Saudi, he, he said to us, Robin, and I remember his words where we were two weeks before the end of the season, he said, we are no near, nowhere near ready, prepared for the start of this season. Yeah. But he had to go with what he went with. Mm. He, Raul Jimenez came into the football club as somebody who could help them. Mm. He's, he's, I've always thought, and I still consider Marco Silva to be a very good Premier League manager. I think he's yeah. had difficult circumstances. Yeah, I, I don't think once or twice he's maybe helped himself with some of the decisions or ways he's gone about things. But I just believe... With a great, with the right group of people, with the right support, and I'm not talking spending hundreds of millions, but bringing in key players, I still think he's a very, very good manager there, mate. And I don't think he gets enough credit. Mm -hmm. They're nowhere near the relegation. Mm -hmm. They go to Manchester United. I mean, yesterday they go to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. and I know United's tactic was, you know, after Maguire's equalised, the Bassi goal, then let's go for it. But at 1 1, you know, mm. Fulham might have been happy, like, that's a great point away from home. No, he, mm. he gets Traore on, Traore runs down mm. the side, squares it across to Wobi, and they get the goal. And I, I still think Marco mm. Silva has got lots of upside and is one of those managers who we overlook now. We're looking at all the new ones and people overseas, and, and uh, Marco Silva is a very, very capable coach. Uh, and Fulham is a football club that doesn't get enough attention. 
I like it, mate. I like it because, you know, again, when a manager and a club sit in the middle and they don't get too mm. far towards the European, they don't yeah. come too far, it's out of, off our kind of immediate story yeah. radar. Mm -hmm. And Fulham have done that. And when you look at their team, I've just got their team up. I mean, it's not a great looking squad. It's not a great looking team. They, he, he's the, he does amazing with a, with in some ways an average set of players. Timothy Castagna was at Leicester City. You know, Anthony Robinson is a good solid left back, not a, not a world beater. Andreas Pereira is released from Man United, not deemed to be good enough. Alex Awobi's jumped around the league a little bit. You know, and Munez up front, this is new, the new guy playing up front where Raul didn't work out very well. He's, they're, they're, Harry Wilson, of course, has jumped around a little bit, former yeah. Liverpool guy. I mean, they have... You know, Burnt Leno sort of kicked out of Arsenal. So it, it's not, it is a squad that we could be saying, God, they struggle and they, you know, they, they, they're they going to fight to fight relegation. Not been in the picture. Smart manager, good manager, experienced manager now. He's been around English football yeah. a long, long time, yeah, Marco yeah. Silva. Sometimes gets a little fired up and he's a little mm. prickly sometimes in interviews. Yeah. But I think it's a good shout. He's done an excellent job and we can't, you know, we can't, we can't study every team and talk thoroughly about yeah. every team on the podcast, yeah. Rob. We'll be here for days. But it, it, and I, I know what you mean, and I apologise to Fulham fans that we don't maybe feature them enough because there's so many stories that go on in this league yeah. that we, yeah. we feel that we have to hear. But so it's a good mention of a good club in a lovely part of London. There's a good place to play, even though the last time I went there, I got elbowed in the face and split my lip right down here. <laughs> Apart from that, love playing at the cottage, and um, and they're doing and the manager's doing a great job. So yeah, yeah good shout, mate. Good one. Good yeah. one. Marco Silva, a bit of love for Marco Silva and Fulham never goes amiss. Mm. Okay, mate, let's move it on to uh, some other results of, of this weekend. Yeah. I'll pick out uh, my first one. Aston Villa 4, Nottingham Forest 2, a bit of a Midlands derby. <coughs> two clubs who were former European Cup winners back in the day, mate. Uh, but Aston Villa's trajectory mm. seems to be going in the right direction again. Found mm. their form at home. Um, goals from Ollie Watkins, 14 Premier League goals for him. Douglas Louise, I know you love him. Eighth and ninth Premier League goals mm. for him. And Leon Bailey continues to be a real threat. Signed new contract, much happier. Um, but I have to say, Rob, mm. at one point the game was, was in the balance a little bit because Forrest got back into things with Nia Carte getting uh, a 3-1. Gibbs White, just after half-time, got them back to 3-2. And Alanga missed a really yeah. good opportunity, which would have made it 3-3. Oh. Um, but Villa went on, got the mm. points. And Unai Emery's team, Rob, now have an eight-point gap between them and Manchester United as they sit in fourth. I mean, all of a sudden, Rob, it's, it's on for them, isn't it? Villa are back, back in pole yeah, position. It's on. I know they are. I mean, Spurs, you know, uh, they're, what, they're five points. Spurs have got a game in hand, but Spurs yeah. are five points behind Aston mm -hmm. Villa. I think we know that um, there's been the odd blip for Villa, and, and yeah. there's going to be, of course. Yeah. They're, they're, fighting, they're trying to get in the, the top four. It's not as though they're challenging for the title. There's been a few performances that have been disappointing, but but for the most part, they've not had a ton of injuries. They've got a manager that's tried and tested and has got yeah. a, a system right down. It's a great. It's going to be a great race again. Mm -hmm. going to be a great race. That Man United result is such a blow for them. Yeah. With that, that that gap there now mm. um, and with Spurs that will, that will come again that was such a I think defining game for Man United in terms of that top four race the only thing that I would say is that that extra spot that, that might come to yeah, England in the Premier League possibly, for another spot yeah. in the Champions League for next season that might save Manchester United um, but no it's a, it's a good point and I saw the goals, goals going in Ollie Watkins taps the ball yeah. in some of their football yeah. it's really really good and Leon Bailey a player that doesn't always start I, I just think he's. I'd love to watch him play yeah. If I'm if I'm going there at Villa Park, I want to see Leon Bailey play because mm. I think he's got pace, he's got skill, he does things unexpected, he's in and around the goal. Um, yeah, it, it, it's another good good, good story, story Rob. Yeah, um, let me go on to this, Rob, and, and I know this may be a little bit out of order what we have got here, but but Palace, that game, how big was oh, that game for club, Crystal Palace yeah. against Burnley? Yeah. You know, if Palace would have would have lost that game, then mm. they're pulled they're right in towards a relegation yeah. with a new manager. That that is a is a humongous win. For Palace mm. and Oliver Glasner, the new manager that, that seems Rob very calm. Yeah, again, like we'll, him. we'll yeah. you know we, we see him now and we'll mm. get to a nice demeanour, change the team a little bit. He's got his attacking players in there. Yeah. He has Mateta and he has uh, Edward Alton, Edward in there, and Jordan Ayew. Yeah. The, Jordan Ayew, by the way, should get some sort of unappreciated like season yeah, ticket or some yeah. award <laughs> because he's he's yeah. underappreciated. But yeah. he, he he's an and important player. We have our underappreciated so like team of the year, mate. The he's, he's going to be in there. I, I'm going to find a place for <laughs> he's him. He's going to be in the team of the year. Yeah. yeah. Is, is it, so I'll that, tell you what I liked about Glasner, mate. Two <laughs> things I liked about. Well, he's changed the system a little bit. He likes this three, four, two underneath one. The two underneath could be Elise and, and Eze, and the one, whether it's Mateta mm. or Edward, or he brings someone in, could be exciting. Likes to press, he wants a bit more possession. 
Um, but I'll tell you the thing that stood out for me that I've liked about him, and I've seen three interviews, and the first thing he said in all the three interviews was, my thoughts go to Roy Hodgson, I hope everything's okay with him. And I thought, proper guy. Mm. Mm. Proper guy. Not about mm. him, yeah. not about the club, not about there. He mm. mentioned Roy Hodgson on three occasions, and I thought, I like that. It's a good start. Yeah, it's always good to see to, to, for for yeah. somebody like that to, to pay good respects to and be humble. Yeah. And yeah. even in his interview after the game, Rob, he said, I've been here like two days. Mm. Like, I, yeah. you know, this is the players that, yeah. the, and the yeah. staff and the players that deserve credit here. But no, but he does deserve credit and it's a great start. And yeah. they're almost now, Rob, at Palace at 28 points, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Not I mean, far that's off, a lovely are they? cushion now. Four that's a lovely foot, cushion. Yeah, they're not far off. That go. one blimmin' result was yeah. such an important game. So that, mm. that definitely deserves a mention. And, um, yeah, I'll just give Brighton and Everton a mention, mate, while we, while we finish yeah. off. Uh, Brantwaite with a goal, yep. 73 minutes on the clock, struggling to score goals. The big centre-half comes up with a big moment. And then, you know, they get mm. Gilmore sent off, Rob Brighton. They're down to 10 men, absolutely throwing things in, yeah. kitchen sink. And, and Lewis Dunk comes up with a massive header. Great point for Brighton, but the mm. two points drop for Everton, Rob, could be killer <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. for Sean Dyche and, and his team. Yeah. Yeah, it, it will be. I mean, to be so close there, oh. and you, you, we all know what it means at this yeah. time of season to get three points. And also, I see that Sean Dyche, it might have been before the game, Rob, I was reading the news and stuff, like, when are we going to find out about our appeal? And, yeah. and he's right, yeah, any, he any, Rob. Yeah. I mean, Come on, what are they family, doing? get on with what, it. Why yeah, is it taking yeah, so long? Yeah. I mean, and, and by the way, this is, an, and maybe we're running out of time a little bit, Rob, but I, I, let me, there was a debate on the radio that we, we of course, we listen to the sport radio yeah. all the time, and um, and I think they were saying, oh, they shouldn't, they shouldn't worry about it. They got ten points deducted. It's only going to get better for them. It, 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 it's on the players' minds, and and a lot of things I say, you might think is a lot of crap, right? But I've been in this situation. We had three points deducted at Middlesbrough, and I, I promise you, when we were at appeal, we all thought, you know, what it, it, we need those points back. We, you, you kind of expect to get a boost from it, and when there's yeah. an uncertainty, it didn't help us. It didn't help us. The result comes, we didn't get them back. We went down by two points. So it does affect the players. I don't yeah. care what anybody thinks they know about it. And and, and when Sean Dyche said that it's kind of in yeah, this kind fine. of, you, yeah. you know, he, he said when players are driving to the to the ground or something, it's not something that's, that, that directly affects them, but it, it, mm, subconsciously it's in, it's mind, in there. Yeah, are they going to get some points say, back? Yeah. Are, we, are we not quite as bad? Do we have to... It, it, it does play you with can, your, You kind of feel head. like if the um, Premier League uh, are going down, have gone down this route and, and have said that they've got to have the time span to get this thing dealt and done with and give Everton a chance. If you're going to take the points, take the points and at least give them a chance so we know where yeah. we are. The longer you leave it, but yeah. you're 100% right. And, and listen, we we await the next week or two that we're hearing that, that something will be said. But um, yeah, Sean Darch and his yeah. team, disappointed by that, disappointed to lose two points. The other game mm. that we had today, mate, mm. um, not a classic. Wolves won 1-0. Wolves not as the best, Rabia, with, with a good header. Uh, Sheffield United, slightly better performance, conceded 66 goals now in 26 games, worst defensive record ever in the Premier League. Um, Chris Wilder and his team headed to the championship, and, and we'll have mm. to see how that all plays yeah. out. But, um, yeah, that's that's your lot, mate, for, no, for, for the, this the, weekend. Yeah, no, just last, that's just this Wolves again. Uh, moving up to eighth yeah, place, Rob, in the Premier yeah, League is yeah. is well, that, he's right there. He's right there as manager of the year when we mm. come to the end of the season in terms of Gary O'Neill and what he's done. Yeah. But Wolverhampton Wanderers is in eighth spot now. Won the last two games. It's like it, it, and I, you know, I know it wasn't a great game today, Rob. I, I watched it as well, of yeah. course, and um, I, I just kind of like the, the the way that they're playing mm. and the, the atmosphere in the stadium and like they're knocking the ball around. They're spreading it across. They're playing it through. You got Neto. I mean, it's just a good watch. Wolves yeah. are, a, are a good watch, a good story. A bright young manager is doing great things and, and well done to him. But when I look at the table and see him the eighth in the league, yeah. right behind Brighton and Manchester United, well done. Like it was that's, a sense, wasn't really, really Do you remember when um, given. we did the first game, didn't we? Um, um, ball hadn't been kicked. Wolves were at oh. Manchester United and we're at Old Trafford. <laughs> And surprised is how well they yeah, played. Yeah. We talked to him after. He'd had three days with the yeah. players and he got a system. And I remember, Rob, yeah. we were talking and thinking, like, wonder if Wolves have just given this, like, hold the fort for a little bit till we find a better manager and whatever. Mm. We, were, we didn't even think of him yeah, that probably. much as a permanent. Yeah. But, God, what a job he's done. And it, his mm. reputation mm. has been severely enhanced, Rob, with, with what he's done at this football club. And mm. I was saying today, yeah. it's great for English yeah. football, by the way, that we get some young English managers who are showing that they can go 
toe to toe with you know your Glasners and your your Klops and your, your yeah your and, the and, and the tactical and side the tactical of things side. yeah and, and he definitely is one of them so mm. well done Gary and well done mm. Wolves mm. eighth place in the table all right mate that's your lot for this weekend when both Arsenal and Man City won at the top of the table very different performances for both those teams Manchester United's good run comes to an abrupt end due to a late Fulham winner and the first piece of domestic silverware goes to Liverpool after that Virgil van Dijk header. That's one piece of silverware done, three more to go. We'll be back next weekend, Sunday, March the 3rd. That's to review match with 27 and a little matter of the Manchester Derby. Coverage begins 10 a.m. Eastern time, exclusively live on Peacock. But for now, I'm Earl, he's Musty, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.